So a very good morning and welcome back to another video. Now, the last time I was here, it was the middle of winter. It was snowing quite a lot and my plans kind of got destroyed by the weather a little bit. So we've come back late spring. I'm going to take some photographs and some waterfalls and I want to use the live modes on the back of this camera, specifically the live time and the live bulb. I thought they'd make a great fun little tool to do some long exposure photography with. So let's get stuck in. We'll find some waterfalls take some long exposures with the live modes on my Olympus EM1 Mark II. Now, this first waterfall, it always makes me a little bit nervous trying to get to it. You may be able to see it down there through a gap between these trees but it essentially means I've got to scramble down this cliff face now I've done this a few times I've always gone the other way around but this is the way that I always come out and it's a little bit easier to get out this way well I kind of figured it might be easy to go down but I do not like this one at all but the good news is looking at the waterfall I don't think it's quite as full I don't think the beck is moving quite as fast as it was the last time I was here which stopped me from being able to cross over and get low down on the waterfall but from where I'm looking right now it looks like it may be possible to get a photograph from the ledge where I've stood before, but also cross over the beck and get down a little bit lower on the waterfall. So fingers crossed we may be able to get two photographs of this one before we move on to the next one. So let me scramble my way down here. Hopefully it doesn't go disastrously wrong. And I'll pick it up on you when I get to the bottom. Let's go. Right, so I've been fettling around now for a few minutes, just trying to find a new composition for this waterfall. See, every other time I've been here, I've kind of stood up on the ledge behind you and shot down on it. But I've been able to get down onto here today, where I can sort of shoot a little bit more square onto the waterfall, looking a little bit more into its face. So we've got a 10-stop ND filter behind a 3-stop hard-edge graduated filter. Now, I've put the grad on purely because there's a lot of sky in the background. I'm putting the grad on kind of evens out the sky with the reflection in the pool of the waterfall. And we're getting around a minute, a minute and a half on the exposure time. So I'm going to bring you around here and I'm going to explain to you the live bull mode on this camera. So this is the back of my Olympus EM1 Mark II. And as you can see in the top corner there, it says live bulb. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the remote timer to start this exposure. I'm going to slide it up. And here it goes. Now you've seen the bottom corner is a time count in there. So it's counting up and every four seconds it will display an updated image as well as an updated histogram. So all you do is stand here with your remote shutter in your hand. As soon as that image and the exposure on the histogram looks good to you, you stop the exposure. So let's give it some time to go and see how this image turns out. So I've just had a bit of a nightmare with the camera in the card that this has been recording on. It kept coming up with a card error every time I was trying to press record. So if this is the start of the video, I do apologise. It wasn't my fault. Um, I'm kind of hoping it's rescued. It seems to play on the camera. I'm just not too sure if it's going to be there when we got on the uh, computer when we get home. So, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Right, the plan is we're going to cross this waterfall and then we're going to drop down, get a little bit lower down on it, get right on the water take a quick photograph and then head off to my next location which is another waterfall in the next village of Beck Hall. So let's go, um, yeah, let's cross this waterfall. Hopefully we stay nice and dry. So I think I've kind of decided against going down against the waterfall because there's a lot of trees down there and I'm not going to be able to climb over them. And I kind of want to try and do something from where you're stood about now. Just shooting on this main big waterfall that's coming over there. You know, so you've got the smaller one to the side. And you've got this little bit of water coming over the cliff behind me. I'm wondering if we can do something from where you're stood. Let's have a look. Let's set a camera up and see if we can take another photograph. So this time around, I've kind of punched in quite closely to the waterfall. I wanted to get something a little bit wider, but there's just too many distractions around. And I kind of figured if we just punch in on the waterfall and get the big one, 
the little one. Some of the greenery in the moss on the rocks around it, it might work quite well and it looks all right in the back of the camera. So let's go ahead. So we're going to use the same technique as before. So the camera is in live ball mode, F5.6, ISO 200. And there we go. So the remote up. Now it's just a case of waiting for a minute. to see how the photo turns out. So do you know what I've decided to do? Stuff it. We're going to hang around here. I have this problem when it comes to photography and it tends to mean that I rush around quite a lot and I tend to miss things that I would otherwise normally have seen. Bouncing around to location to location, always stressing and worrying about time constraints and things like that. And today, I decided we're just going to chill out. We're just going to hang around on the banks of this beck. Now, I've found this fallen tree, some mossy scene. There's a little bit of an old stone wall covered in moss. There's some old mossy trees in the background. I thought it might make for an interesting photograph. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to take the photo. So we're at F5, 160th of a second, ISO 800 for some reason. So we're going to change that now because that is way too much. Um, way, 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 way too much. Way too much. We've got ISO 200. Let's throw it back to base ISO. We're not down there in the dark depths of waterfalls anymore, are we? So F5, underexposed by two thirds of a stop. A 50th of a second, two second timer. Here we go. Nice little bit of light being cast on that tree. I like it. Here's that photograph. So on the drive up here and pretty much over all of Yorkshire, there was this thin veil of fog. They were driving through it for about an hour and a half. And as I got to the top of the Yorkshire Moors where the road off to go from these two, I stopped off and I took a couple of photographs of the radar station with just a little bit of fog in the foreground and it kind of looked like a really spooky little scene, I quite liked it. So here's a couple of photographs from a little bit earlier on. Now, the problem I seem to have now is that the light has got really, really intense. The golden hour, all the soft light and everything, it's all kind of dissipated a little bit and it's now very strong. You can see behind me there's a very strong highlight. Where have I gone? Hello? Are we coming? We're coming back. Yay, we're back. There's a very strong highlight just behind me there. Um, and that seems to be translating to a lot of the scenery around here at the minute. So I might just head for a little bit of a walk down the beck and see if we can't find another little sheltered area away from all of this harsh light. See if we can't find another waterfall, another something falling over. I don't know. I've not been there this side before. I'm kind of at a new location and I've kind of run out of time to go to the original spot. So we're just staying around here. I've just seen something. I'll pick it up in a second. So what I've come across is the same waterfall we were shooting before, but we've moved just a little bit further back. Now in front of me, there is a big tree. In the background, there is a smaller tree. And just on the floor in front of me, there is an old broken tree. And I just kind of thought the three of them made some really fun little elements just to frame the waterfall in the background. Now I'm using the polarizer here. Um, I'm not using the 10 stop filters. I kind of brought the wrong filter kit with me this morning. I intended to bring the other one where I've got a three stop and a six stop as well. The kit I've got with me now is purely just a 10 stop and some variable ND filters. So more on me than anything else. But my point here is with the polarizing filter, you can kind of think of these as one stop filters. So I can get the exposure time down here to around a second, a second and a half, no problems. And it just gives a little bit of movement to the water, but it also retains some of the texture as well which is a look that I actually prefer for long exposure photography. But as we were shooting before, like I've just said, I kind of brought the wrong kit with me and I only have the one ND filter, which is really annoying. But I think this photograph might work quite nice. Now, there's a slight issue. You may be able to see on my face. The sun is just peeking over the hill just off to my left hand side. Now, if I put my hand over here, it eliminates any lens flare. If I take the hand away, you lose it. You kind of get wash out with come contrast. You wash out the saturation and you get a little bit of a lens flare. But if I put my hand there, I'm able to just stop that from happening. So I'll focus on a tree just in front of the waterfall, about a third of the way through the frame. Here we go, two second timer, two second exposure. Here's a photograph. Right, so we have this scene here. There is a tree just there. It's just catching a little bit of light on the side of it. You've got the waterfall in the background. Now this is one of those scenes that is really, well, there's a lot of light going on here and I kind of die it down a little bit. But what I've discovered is there is a button on top of my camera. It says HDI for thing will focus. 
it's right there it says HDR now if I press that it brings up a menu here now if I put this to three frames at two stops of um, over and under exposure from the base shot it seems like I'm able to get this so why have I never noticed this before so I have it set up in the HDR mode I focused on the tree in the background there if I press and hold the shutter button the camera takes three photographs from me automatically and I'll be able to merge them when I get home in Lightroom that is amazing why have I never noticed that before it's not like I don't know that you can do this but I've never noticed it before now is that the middle exposure under exposure and over exposure so we have all that data there all the extra dynamic range this micro 430 camera here's that photograph So that may have just seemed like a really strange thing for a photographer to say that he didn't know this camera did that but I genuinely, when I do the HCR things I'll throw the camera into manual mode and I'll adjust the exposure myself I didn't actually know that the camera could do that I'm pretty sure when I got the camera I thought I'd maybe set that up to do something else but it turns out I left it factory, that's great that so that means I don't have to mess around changing exposures I can just, I can just dial it all in there, press the shutter button and the camera does it all for me um, I don't really want to mess around with the HDR photo merges in the camera, that's probably going to end up with some results that I don't want. But as an idea going forward, that may make life a little bit easier in certain situations. So there we are boys and girls, another day on the North Yorkshire Malls. Now I'm going to be totally honest with you, I've not really felt the photos this morning. I was a little bit disappointed when I got here after seeing all the weather, the mist, the fog the backlight and everything on the drive up to get here and none of it being there well it kind of disappointed me a little bit and well it has been what it has been on it but I have found a couple of new features with my camera so the live bulb mode that looks like it's going to be a useful one going forward especially for the coastal long exposures I really do hope I'm able to put that to use over the coming months now the sun rises a little bit earlier on we'll be able to go to some of the coastal towns and there'll be some people milling around looking at me while I'm you know doing this talking to cameras i really want to head up to whitby stairs robin hoods bay places like that so that's going to come in useful you know, over the coming months and the hdr mode in the camera like i was saying earlier on i didn't know that my camera was able to do that like i said when i do the hdr photo images i normally just expose myself i just change the shutter speed by a couple of stops either side and bish bash bosh there you go but who knew that the camera could do it automatically for you so it's been a bit of a learning curve if nothing else this morning I do hope one or two of the photos have turned out all right. I'm, I'm not going to lie, it'd be a bit of a bit of a wasted journey if they didn't. But like I say, just felt a little bit of disappointment when I arrived here after seeing all the weather on the way up. My own fault, maybe I should have checked. Maybe I could have stopped off. Who knows, but there we go. So I'll be back next week with another video. So if you have enjoyed today's, please do give it a thumbs up. It really does help the video and it brings new viewers to see my content. If you'd like to more than that, somewhere below me, maybe uh, that side, I think. There's a subscribe button, you can press that and you'll see more nonsense from me every single week. So until the next time, I'm going to love you and leave you and say peace and goodbye.